All right, guys, today we're going to talk about some of the most practical knives in my collection and maybe some that you should check out. So as you know, if you're, you've been around the channel for any time at all, you know that sometimes I talk about impractical knives, maybe some knives that you can't even own due to your country or state that you live in. Something like this beautiful heretic Manticore X that is in the Bounty Hunter styling that I absolutely love to death. This thing is so cool and I will definitely be doing more videos specifically just talking about this knife, but in this video, like I said, I wanted to talk about knives that are actually practical, that are truly like the, that are truly like the meaning of EDC. Like these are actual EDC knives. So let's jump right into it with the Spider Co. So first off is the Manix. Two. I think the Manix 2 is probably one of my favorite just straight up EDC knives, though I don't know this TRM is pretty awesome, but honestly this Manix 2 I think really bridges a excellent gap between a knife that is super like well sized so you feel like it's not a super cramped up knife. Once again you have an awesome finger choil. I love finger choils on knives because like I say give you a lot of control over that very back portion in the blade but at the same time too it is just a really good size and that blade shape is very standard very basic but is going to work very well. Now mine is in S110V which is a steel that definitely not recommended for a lot of beginners because S110V similar to S90V is very hard to sharpen but if you do have something like a wicked edge you are able to put a very nice edge on it so mine is not absolutely perfect but it's pretty darn close anyways that is the Manix 2 it is a hard knife to go wrong with and is just overall very practical and next to it is another super practical knife itself and that is the paramilitary 2 also by Spyderco. Now this one is a little bit special because it does have a custom clip on it and of course this is a limited edition version but the very basic just standard edition paramilitary 2 has no frills to it and it is an absolute workhorse that is you know a good like standard of measure or some people do truly use it as a unit of measure for generally speaking like EDC knives so some of them are more fancy such as this one this one is also in Rex 45 so you know once again not a very beginner friendly steel but a very very nice knife and once again I think I touched this one up not 100% sure but uh, no doubt it is very slicey and very practical all right, next one up, and this one ironically might not be the most practical of the Mini Griptilians, but the Mini Griptilian as a whole. And the Mini Griptilian, I think, is not only a really good size range, especially if you're one of those people that either needs or wants a smaller knife uh, for their EDC, but the Mini Grip strikes a pretty good balance of price point and value as a whole. It is a pretty generally speaking, you know, well-rounded knife. Mine is wearing some aftermarket scales on it to thicken it up just a little bit, but even in its stock configuration, how I have my other mini grip, these guys are pretty darn hard to go wrong with. And I will say, to make the point for the not so popular Tonto version of these knives, I do actually really like the Tonto, um, even the full size grip Tonto, but the mini grip Tontos are really nice as well because they still hold this characteristic of a drop point. So you have a nice reinforcement and a nice swedge at the, uh, tip to give it a little bit added strength. And once again, not recommending you go around prying with any knife, but this one does have a bit of an added tip strength to it due to how they've done their Tonto. And the nice part is it's still very, very pointy for those Tonto needs. And of course you have that very pronounced uh, transition line. So you can actually use this transition right here for cutting things specifically with really good control over depth. So anyways, the Tonto is useful in and of itself, but the mini grip is very, very practical. All right, next one up is going to be the Andrew Demko or Demko Knives 80 20.5. Now this one, I think the 20.5 really strikes a good balance of being a you know smaller size, more refined than you know like larger options or offerings. But that shark lock makes it super friendly, super user friendly. But at the end of the day, you're left with a really great standard clip point. The shark tip or uh, the kind of essentially worn cliff or sheep's footed blade 
um, isn't quite as practical, but this clip point is really practical and the overall ergonomics to it are just there. Like it's really nice, really usable, and uh, it's usable in a wide variety of situations and settings. Ultimately, once again, you do see that um, forward finger choil for choking up on it. And yeah, it's hard to complain about the like I said, the Shark Lock makes it super user friendly. And overall, it's a very practical knife. Okay, next one up is probably the epitome of practicality, and that is the Hogue Deca. Now, this one is the more budget offering with the, you know, FRN or just overall like fiberglass reinforced nylon scales. Um, but it is very practical very useful and coming in with that magna cut steel you're going to get a lot of performance out of this super thin super super slicey blade now mine is in the worn cliff version and even though i'm not always a fan of you know kind of out there blade designs i do really think that the worn cliff is quite practical if you did want they do offer of course just a standard drop point which is in and of itself just fine as well but the worn cliff version of this does tend to be pretty darn practical because you still have a very nice tip for piercing into things, but you do have a good amount of control over it because it is a Warncliffe after all. In addition to the thing I like that they've done with these Warncliffe models is they give you a dual grind. So this kind of upper 60% portion of the blade is slightly thinned out. So it is extra, extra slicey. So if you know you're going to be cutting through a thinner material and you just need that extra blade stock removed for slicing, you can use this portion of the blade pretty easily, or if you need that extra kind of steel or material, you can just choke back and use this portion of the blade. So anyways, that is kind of uh, this blade as a whole. I think it's super practical in either tip variation, but the Deca is definitely, definitely more practical than most blades. All right. Moving into nearing the finish line, we're talking about the TRM Neutron. Now, a lot of people know about the Atom, and the Atom, I think, is also, like, a lot of what I'm about to say about the Neutron could definitely be applied to the Atom as well. But the Neutron essentially carries a lot of the same, like, user characteristics of something like the Deca, where it's very thin, super slicey. I will say this one, I think, is a little bit more slicey because they've opted to go for a near full flat grind on this guy, but it has excellent 20 CV steel and uh, super, like I said, super thin, super slicey. And the thing that I really do like about the Neutron overall is that if this is what you want, it is super, super thin and slim, like as an overall thickness, uh, it is thinner than most things. However, because it still has titanium um, liners to it, because this is a liner lock, it still feels pretty darn good. Like it feels good and well weighted in the hand. Even things like the Deca feel a little bit more forward heavy, but the center point or the weight, uh, the centering of the weight on this knife is right around the center of the knife. So it feels very even and balanced in hand. And of course, you can also put a bunch of different scales on this one. Uh, the way that I got this knife on the secondary, um, it came with three sets of scales so it has black and orange on it right now just to give it some nice color pop so anyways the trm neutron though is a super nice knife and if you can find one of these for a reasonable price uh which they fairly frequently fly in the you know 150 to 170 dollar range i would definitely recommend getting something like a trm neutron or atom all right last one up is going to be the good old faithful and that is emerson and with this one, it's going to be the Horseman, which is the Mini CQC8. And I think that the Horseman or Mini CQC8, however you'd like to pronounce it, is one of their more practical offerings. I do have more Emersons myself, but this one's probably the most realistic. This is probably the most realistic of all uh, that are out there. And there are some other really good ones. I should note that the A100 and the A100 Mini are really super practical blades themselves. But I think, I don't know, I personally like the ergonomics of the Horseman a lot because it just fits so well, so nicely in the hand. But then you're left with a really nice, subtly sloping or kind of curving 
blade that leads up to a pretty nice tip. Now this one's a little bit weird because it does have a swedge, but the swedge kind of like ends before it gets to the actual tip. So it's a little bit interesting in that regard. I don't know if I'd say this has the strongest tip. Obviously mine has seen some use to it. So that tip is not as pointy as it used to be, unfortunately, but it is still more than enough to poke into things and do what you need to do. Anyways, the Emerson Horseman is, I think, a pretty good, reasonable ground because it is slightly smaller because it is the Mini CQC8. It is slightly smaller than its larger brother, the CQC8, that I find to be a little bit on the large side for practical EDC, but the Horseman does strike a good balance of utility and size and carryability. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. These are some of the most practical knives in my collection. As always, God bless, and I'm out.